I mean, yeah, if you look at the, the sort of legislative hearings around prohibition of marijuana during the 1930s, there was a lot of ignorance about what the, you know, comical ignorance about the effect of the drug and, and how it, uh, and what it did. And I, I think it was, the perception of lawmakers was it wasn't really, that, that it wasn't used by uh, very many people at all outside of this sort of narrow degenerate, bunch of degenerates that they were trying to control. And that, and it was their goal to, to sort of keep it that way. And, and I, I think that was the, and that was very explicit really in, in some of the propaganda from the, the 20s and 30s. And I, I think in the 70s, the, pro, the, the dimensions of the problem had sort of changed. Like in the, in the 70s, there is this thought going around that we are all addicted to, or that, that drug addiction is much wider than, than what people worried about before. You know, that we're all sort of, not all of us, but just about all of us are becoming over, overly reliant on headache medicines and uh, pick, pick up pills, barbiturates and amphetamines and all these other substances that were being used like, like crazy during that period. And, and so there was, um, yeah, so the concern about, the, so there was this sort of generalized concern about drugs too um, in the 70s. See, I mean, if you're looking for why marijuana was prohibited sort of in this later period, why like the war on drugs included marijuana in like the, the 70s and stuff, that is a, it's a great question because that was so much being debated at, at the time. I mean, during the early 70s, groups like the American Bar Association and the American Medical Association were all coming out uh, to legal, uh, against criminalization of marijuana and it, it was not an untenable, it was not an utterly untenable political position at that time. And then you had things like the, the 1972 um, Presidential Commission on Marijuana coming out and saying that they were against, you know, against legal pro prohibition and all these other groups coming out in the, in the same, in the same way. And one of the great sort of breaks on any change in the marijuana law at that point was Nixon, the Nixon administration's uh, reluctance to to change what it had put in place in 1970. So um, th there's nothing sort of, there was nothing sort of natural or inevitable about it. I I don't think. I mean, I, I think it was sort of the the result of pretty concrete political actions by known players, you know. Um, and and this being, I don't know largely associated with the, the presidential administration kind of propaganda. Uh, so, you know, as, as well as Nixon getting on TV and declaring war against drugs and all that, and, you know, getting on TV, holding conferences, getting celebrities involved for, you know, public relations events. He also started um, a relationship with TV networks that's continued for decades, really, um, sort of encouraging them, prompting them to put anti-drug plot lines in in entertainment, you know, in, in cop dramas and other TV shows, and reaching out to to news reporters and sort of pushing pushing this line to media executives, and and so there's this whole back, you know, the, the, this whole behind the scenes campaign um, to involve and, and sometimes in hidden ways media organizations and publicizing the the dangers of drugs. Um, and, you know, in the seventies, the dangers of drugs, again, drugs, they started ad adopting this uh, idea of drugs as this category of substances that bother your mind. You know, people didn't really think about, uh, amphetamine pills and alcohol in the, in the same category. Alcohol is a bad example. They didn't really think about amphetamine pills and LSD in the same category necessarily. Because, you know, uh, amphetamine pills you could buy legally over the counter. You know, you, you could, people would share them with each other. It wasn't, wasn't a big deal. And, you know, L LSD was, was hard to get and, and by this point illegal. And so, I, I don't know. I, I think a lot of the, 
propaganda around the war on drugs helped sort of define this category for people. I mean, I, I, I think one of the reasons we think about marijuana as a drug and perhaps alcohol less so is, you know, because we've had all these TV advertisements and shows on TV and all this stuff telling us uh, that we should buy one and not the other.